This video is a quick review about using the HINTS exam. I'm going to cover what you must see in order to definitively diagnose vestibular neuritis in a dizzy patient so that you can safely discharge them home. Hi, Peter Johns here, vertigo enthusiast and emergency physician with over 30 years experience. I know there's a lot of confusion out there about how to use the HINTS exam to diagnose vestibular neuritis and in doing so rule out a dizzy stroke. So let's get right to it. You should only perform the HINTS exam on patients with new, ongoing, persistent dizziness and nystagmus that can be seen when the patient is at rest. And that means that you don't do the HINTS exam on patients who don't have constant dizziness and nystagmus at rest. Nystagmus in patients with vestibular neuritis can be as obvious as this woman, who has horizontal nystagmus beating to the left, or may be as subtle as this woman, whose left beating horizontal nystagmus was only clearly seen when she was asked to look 30 degrees to the left through a blank piece of paper. In patients with constant dizziness and nystagmus, which is seen when the patient is at rest, is also known as the acute vestibular syndrome. And the differential diagnosis is basically, is this vestibular neuritis more likely, or is this a posterior circulation stroke masquerading as vestibular neuritis, which is less likely. So the first thing to do is to see if they have any of the central features listed here. New significant headache or neck pain, focal weakness or paresthesias, any of the dangerous Ds, diplopia, dysarthria, dysmetria, dysphonia or dysphagia, vertical nystagmus at rest, or a new inability to walk unaided. Patients with vestibular neuritis shouldn't have any of these concerning symptoms. If they do, work them up for stroke or call a stroke code if they have obvious significant neurologic impairment beyond just being dizzy and having nystagmus. So if your patient does have constant dizziness and you can see horizontal nystagmus at rest and they don't have any of the central features, it's time for the HINTS exam. And there are two things that you can't see and two things that you must see in order to definitively diagnose your patient with a peripheral cause of vertigo, which is almost always vestibular neuritis. Again, only use hints if they have constant dizziness and nystagmus at rest. Oh, and the other thing, the patient can't have a new hearing loss as determined by the finger rub test. Just rub your fingers together outside their ears and make sure they don't have a new loss of hearing. That's the plus part of hints plus, and a new hearing loss could indicate an anterior inferior cerebellar artery infarct. Back to what you can't see and what you must see in order to make the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis. You can't see nystagmus that changes direction with gaze, as in this woman who has left horizontal nystagmus looking straight ahead, and it still beats left when she's looking to the left, but when she looks to the right, it beats to the right. You can't make the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis with nystagmus like that. And you can't see vertical or diagonal skew deviation as in this man, whose right eye goes up and the left eye goes down as they are alternately uncovered. And you must see nystagmus that doesn't change direction with gaze, as in this patient who has left horizontal nystagmus, which increases intensity when she looks to the left and decreases when she looks to the right, but it's still beating to the left. And you must see an abnormal head impulse test, that is a catch-up saccad, when the head is turned rapidly in the opposite direction of the nystagmus. So for the woman who has nystagmus beating to the left, when I turn her head rapidly towards the left, right, here, there is no catch-up saccade, but when I turn her head rapidly to the right, there it is, right there. That's an abnormal head impulse test, and in slow motion as well. And lastly, for the plus part, they can't have a new hearing loss. And if you do all this, and see all this, and document all this, you can then safely send the patient home with the diagnosis of vestibular neuritis. If you're new to this channel, or even if you're not, you can click on this list of my videos that I think would be helpful for vertigo novices. And feel free to like and subscribe this video to help keep them coming. Thanks for watching.